Greetings from Plymouth, Massachusetts. We are now boarding the Mayflower 2 in the Plymouth Harbor. And uh, this is a replica exactly like the ship that the folks uh, sailed over to, to the New World. Imagine boarding this ship not knowing where you're going to start your life over. And a knotted line. Count the number of knots to your hand as that line plays out and you move forward. It's on a spool. In fact, that's it right there. It actually looks much larger than I thought for anyone on this journey to have a living quarter. Now here in Plymouth Harbor, you see lots of rock. Many people have the impression that they landed on a large rock. Now where is Plymouth Rock? You see these modern boats in Plymouth Harbor. This inlet right here leads you to a rock that states 1620, and that would be Plymouth Rock. Let's check in with Michael, who has boarded the Mayflower 2 for the very first time. What's this experience like? Well, I just learned what the poop deck is. and uh, Tell us. The uh, poop deck is up here, and that's where they would uh, measure the speed of the boat by counting the knots after they turned over a 30-second hourglass. So by timing it exactly and how many knots went back, they knew how fast they were going. Can you imagine sailing on this from Europe to Provincetown? Yes, and I think, I always heard that the Mayflower was so small, but I feel like 130 people could get along very well on this. There may be 130 people on this right now. I was on a bus recently with probably 50 or 60 people, and it's a lot smaller than the Mayflower, so I, I think it can happen. Keep in mind, you'd have all of your life belongings with you. Yes. Shared space with all of your belongings. Unless your children were coming over after you. Part of the merchant contract was that the parents would go over first, and then the children would be sent over afterwards. So maybe some of your belongings could come over at a later date. Christopher Jones being the master, he could have had any cabin he wanted, but most ships they call this the master's cabin or the great cabin, and he decided he would share the master's cabin. You see there's a bed on both sides. He and the first mate, John Clark, they shared this cabin. Second mate, Robert Coppin, he lived in the chart house above. Those three men was the men of highest rank, commanding rank. Any of those three, they could command the ship. Every four hours, the watch will change on the ship. A different crew comes on. The sailors live up in the forecastle toward the bow. Every four hours, the starboard watch and the larboard watch. Do you know starboard and larboard? That means left and right to a sailor. The starboard watch and larboard watch, they take turns. Every four hours, one goes to work, the other goes off. And every four hours, generally the commanding officer, he stands above on the deck giving command of how to sail the ship. And he also keeps a four-hour watch. Would folks be able to buy a ticket or just a merchant contract? On this voyage, sir, what makes this different? Our colony, Plymouth Plantation, quite different from the Virginia Company or the Bermuda Company, that we are in a partnership with the investors. And the, the, the bargain was that we would come at company expense. We had not to pay a penny. Uh, and that they would set us out at company expense. And we're going to work now for seven years without getting paid. We are to be supplied, and we're to take what living we can from the lands. But our seven years building the colony is the way of paying off the investment of the company. We also is going to get another kind of pay after seven years. We each is to get a grant of land. Uh, and so we'll be landowners here after the seventh year. That's different from Jamestown too. So this does set you out in a better way, particularly if you could not afford to pay passage. 
to go to Jamestown, the Virginia Company, if you could not pay, pay your passage, you would have to go as a servant under a bond of indenture. Uh, and that ain't the thing that's so favorable. You don't want to be indentured to a man that you don't know well. When the Mayflower Compact was done prior to coming to this location, was that a verbal agreement on paper or on rock? That there was an agreement that was written down out at Cape Cod. Every man had to put his name upon it. Uh, as I've understood, it was because the governor had overheard what he called mutinous mutterings from some of the strangers. Now, I'm one that they call a stranger. I don't know if you'd heard that there was people come on the Mayflower, they'd come from a church in Holland, sometimes called Puritans or sometimes called Pilgrims. Then there was people come from England, like myself. Uh, and uh, when we got to Cape Cod, evidently some of those that come from England was not so eager to continue with the people from Holland. And were saying, oh, here at Cape Cod, we are outside the boundary of the charter. The king had chartered land oh. on the other side of Hudson's River, hundreds of miles from here. This is not land chartered by the king. Free land. Some were saying, free land. Once we're on land, they will not be able to govern over us. What Any freedom. Any man could go and do as he would. And when the governor overheard such talk, he did quickly take and writ up a, a little paper, about uh, eight or ten lines is all it were. And I think the chiefest words is the uh, duty of submission, to submit to the governor, submission and obedience. That, that, that is what is required by that uh, paper. So you love No man, they, they said, you no one's going to go ashore unless they have set their name upon that paper. Uh, generally, we call it the combination. But some will call it a compact or a covenant. Uh, but you folks are welcome to come right in if you'd like. It ain't my cabin, I'm waiting for the master. Uh, Christopher Jones is the master of the ship. I'll give you a push off, right? Now the folks that you would be meeting on the Mayflower to here will be living in the 1600s, doing their best with original dialect and storytelling. Well, they're alongside of modern sailing vessels. I think they do a really good job. Now, what was it like if you were a passenger? Let's check it out. What we saw was, would be luxurious to imagine that everyone had that much space. That would be sleeping vessels for those that needed to keep watch. Do you know the difference between those two? As you can see, no one had privacy. A really much light. So imagine sailing at sea in the evening on this wooden vessel. You wouldn't really want to be burning candles. Is this comfortable? One might wonder. I think this is probably even a shared bed. I can't imagine anyone had their own beds for the whole journey. I'm sure folks must have taken turn resting. Now there's going to be an anniversary sale of a Mayflower ship back to Europe. Do you know when the anniversary sale is going to be taking place? 2017? Uh, well, there's two anniversaries actually. So for Mayflower 2 it would be 2017 and for the original Mayflower arrival it would be 2020. Thank you. Will folks be on there? Or is it just uh, historians? I, I, I don't think they've made that decision yet but the way that usually plays out it's VIPs and stuff. Uh, do you think the journey will take as long or are they going to attach motors? Um, there's there's no journey yet. It hasn't been planned. It's just theoretical. Those are the target dates. Well, here's just a quick glimpse to give you an idea of what this might have all been like. From the Plymouth Bay Colony in Massachusetts, 